Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to um, Energy Play Shop number 34. Today is February the 9th, 2023. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, the topic for this evening is um, why are you here? So I'm really talking about why each and every one of us are here. So not just you, but me as well. So and as with the other play shop, I want to start with just um, a very brief overview of what we talk, we'll be talking about tonight. So we're going to talk about, um, so we're going to do a check-in first. If any, any questions then um, about what happened in previous weeks, uh, we'll, we'll start with that. And then after that, we'll have a presence meditation. And then after the presence meditation, I'll start into tonight's um, topic. And tonight's topic, um, we'll start about talking about why we are here. And I want to go over the, the long game. So uh, humanity is part of a long game of the creator's long game. So humanity is just a, a small a, um, a part of that. And, and within that part, um, our role here on earth. So that is really what I wanna talk about. So I uh, would be talking about um, power over self and also power over others. So those are some of the things I'll be touching on. And I will also would be touching on the transhumanism um, agenda and AI. And um, so that's actually part of the, um, our experiment. So um, before I go on to the meditation, just opening up the floor, any questions from previous weeks or anything you want to share before we get on with tonight not really going once okay in that case let's just start by doing our presence meditation so take a deep breath in And then slowly let your breath go. And as you breathe out, relax your shoulders, relax your body. And then breathe in slowly again. And allow yourself to be fully inflated. And then slowly breathe out as slowly as you can comfortably breathe out. And as you breathe out, relax your body. And then one more deep breath in. <coughs> And breathe out slowly. Continue to breathe in and out according to your own rhythm and with the intention of elongating your breathing as much as it is still comfortable for you. As you breathe in, Imagine that you are breathing in infinite possibilities. And as you breathe out, allow yourself to let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And do this for a few more breaths. The aim here is to really allow your body to become relaxed, to come back into calmness. Mm -hmm. 
And when you feel your body becoming more calm, then the next intention is really to call back all of your energy and attention. So as you breathe in, call back all of your energy. Energy that you may have been using and sending outside while you're at work, while you are getting together with friends, dealing with family, whatever it is that's been happening during the day, as you looking outside and sending your energy outside. In this moment, as you breathe in, call all of those attention and energy back to yourself. And as you breathe out anything that does not support you in this moment, let it go out. Let it leave your body as easily as it comes in. And the more you breathe in and call back your own energy, you may start to feel that you actually become more grounded. And what I usually feel is that I actually feel more of me. I feel more solid as I call back all of my own attention and energy towards my body. So set the intention that you want to focus inside. Especially within your heart, within your heart center, bring back all of your attention and energy. Be absolutely selfish in this moment so that you are giving yourself, giving your body 100% of your attention, 100% of your energy. And you are noticing everything that's going on inside your body. Notice your blood flowing. Notice your energy flowing through your body. And when you feel that you have truly gathered and call back all of your attention and energy within yourself, and you feel that you are fully present with yourself in this moment, then you can come all the way back into the room, open your eyes. And welcome back. Okay, let's start talking about the long game. Um, I think it was sometime last year that I, I went through um, and talked about the creation of the universe, how everything was created and went through the dimensions, each of the dimensions, what um, is really the purpose of each of the, the different dimensions. So that really is the, the long game. The long game is that consciousness, or I should say the creator, or actually even before the creator actually showed up, it was really just um, formless, a formless consciousness. 
that existed in the universe. Actually, no, not the universe. The universe hasn't even happened yet. It's just a formless consciousness that existed and has always existed. And then this formless consciousness started to want to know itself. So from formless, it starts to um, have the idea to know itself. And in order to know itself, it has to create a, starts to create a um, sphere of influence. And that's how one can know oneself because when you have no reference, you don't know what up is, you don't know what down is, you don't know what east, north, east, south, west is. Because when there is infinite, when there is no space, there really is no way of um, measuring which way is north, which way is south, and any of the directions, because there really is no space at all. There is no form at all. So when infinite intelligence wants to get to know itself, the first thing it, it did was to create a sphere of influence. So a sphere of influence still cannot quite um, see and observe itself because the, the best way to, to get to know anything is to observe. So in order to do that, it's created another. So when there are two sphere of influence, then one can start to observe the other. And so that's how formless starts to move through the um, using sacred geometry to start to create form, starts to create light, starts to create all the other things that uh, exist in form. So that is the creation story. So the long game is from formless, we evolved into have form. So forms is not really our body yet. That that's really too far down the road. It is just con like sphere of influences. And then from that, it starts to um, create from very simple forms. It starts to get more and more complex until the universe starts to happen, until the um, stars, planets, all those. There are different kinds of forms, not, not um, human form yet, but they are start of uh, elemental forms. So those forms start to become created and they start, and they do have consciousness. So actually rocks do have consciousness, crystals do have consciousness, water has consciousness. It's not the same consciousness as human beings, but they do have a consciousness. And from that elemental form of consciousness, which is a more, simple kinds of consciousness. It starts to evolve, evolve, and evolve until one day human being starts to um, manifest itself. The human form starts to manifest on earth. And I'm not gonna go into all the different um, things that happen to the human form. I want to keep it very high. Um, level now it's so we are so human beings is part of that evolution from formless to form and getting from simple form to more complicated form and then so on and so on the idea is that one day the forms starts to um, get back to being formless how do we do that that's we are on that journey now. We are on that journey right now. We are each and every one of us is here on this journey um, as a different aspect. 
of creator source to take this journey, to witness this journey. So this is going on. And so then that's the, the big game is that we go from formless to form. And then at a certain period of time, far in the distance, when we actually find out that form actually came from formless. And when we fully realize that, then we will start to go from form back into formless. And when we go back into formless, we go all the way back into not needing. Because um, we have completed that cycle of getting to know ourselves. So that is the journey that we are all on. And we are just, we're just a sliver. We just, our, our lifetime is just not even a blip in this time frame, uh, going from formless to form back into formless. So that is the, that's the long game. And we are all consciously or unconsciously traveling this. So then what does it have to do with what we're doing here on earth? Because we're going through some um, rather big changes. So how, how does that relate to that? I first want to um, talk about that there is more than one way to go from like to, to do this journey of formless to form and then back into into formless there's more than one way to do it but there are actually um two major ways of doing it that we know of like two major ways one is power over self and the other one is power over others I want to talk about the power over self first, because um, the power over others is a contrast. So that's why I want to talk about the, um, the power over self first. And in order to do that, I want to talk about um, something called cities. Oops, okay, where is it? Excuse me, I just want to get that. Okay, got it. So we are, okay, now we're talking about power over self. I want to talk about something called cities. What are cities? Cities are attainments. So in meditation and in yogic, the, the yogic uh, tradition, there is something called cities. Cities is something if you, when you meditate and you do yoga or, or you otherwise start to um, gain control over your body, then these are some of the things that you can achieve when you've done enough of that. So that's, that's what cities are. So these are cities that I actually just got from Wikipedia. So some of them we are more familiar with than others. And I just want to go through them and start to give some relevant um, examples of what it would look like in, in real life. Um, so the first one is ability to reduce one's body to the size of an atom. And then, of course, the uh, corresponding one is the ability to expand one's body to an infinite large size. We have, okay, so I'm not too, I'm not familiar with anyone who, that I know of who, who can actually reduce their own body, I mean, the physical body into the size of an atom. I'm not too sure about that one. However, I do know that we have the ability to expand our body, maybe not to infinitely large size, but to expand to a larger size. Usually it takes time though. Um, for example, a um, human baby is born. 
but it can start to grow into an adult size. So that is one example. Um, and this is something that takes time. However, when we actually have that kind of um, communication and partner with our body, we can do that. It's in another way of looking at it. It's really shape shifting. And there, are, there have been um, shamans who have been known to be able to shape shift to manipulate our own body so that it takes on a different form. So that is coming from this city. And some of the other one is the ability to become weightless or lighter than air. There are lots, well, okay, maybe not, not lots, but there are some Shaolin monks who has, who has the ability to do that. So that is something that we know for sure it's, it's something that can be done. And the ability to become heavy and dense. We also, that's also actually fairly common. And I can give you some example. Um, for example, if you think of um, trying to pick up your pet or even a young child, they may seem to be very small, but if that child or pet does not want to be picked up, they can actually, it's actually not easy to pick them up because they intentionally, you know, they start to be able to alter their um, body weight so that it's harder for you to pick up. So that, that actually to, maybe not to the extent that a, a fully realized um, yogi can do, but anyone actually can do that. So it is something that is not, not that um, far-fetched for human beings. And uh, some of the other ones is the ability to access any place in the world. Um, yeah, we can do that. Um, it, it really depends on what, what do you mean? How literally do you take it? Um, it's so being, being in any place in the world, it can be teleportation or it can be by location. And there have been people that can do that. I think Sifu James actually mentioned that some of his student was playing around with that and they, they are actually um, doing some of that. So totally it's doable. And, um, and then some of the cities is called realize whatever one desires. That's really manifestation. Um, manifestation is more commonplace now, actually. It's getting easier and easier to realize one's desires. Um, there, we've actually uh, have more examples of that. Other cities are to force influence upon anyone. Um, for example, there are... <laughs> <laughs> actually um, a lot we as human beings we have experimented with this um, for a very long time uh, I can give you so Super James did mention that he the way he does it though so he what he he has a way to be able to um interact with other people and like he he did mention that if he wants the the boss to uh, hear him out or if he wants to influence um certain people in a meeting what he does is he set a um a cue for them so when first when they come in the the meeting room he would just shake their hand and actually send that um that message to them and anchor that, that message to them at the beginning of the, the, the meeting so that when he actually needed to say the things that they 
that he wants them to take notice of, it will be much easier. So yes, that is a, an accomplishment that um, we can totally do. And um, of course, the there are other ways of doing that. Um, for example, peer pressure. So no one needs to tell you to um, do certain things, but if you see most of your peers doing that thing, doing uh, like things one way, then most of the time, unless you're, you are a more um, adventurous and stubborn person, you will not think of doing something that is different. So that is part of the um, control the influence on other people as well. So we human beings actually like to experiment with this quite a bit. So yes, this is one of our innate ability. We have that city to be able to say something and influence other people to do what it is that we want them to do. And sometimes we don't actually even need to say something. I have actually um, put ideas into other, I have put ideas into other people without saying anything to them. I simply telepathically talk to them. Hey, you know what? I would like you to blah, blah, blah. And um, I have actually gotten some results from it. So yes, that's something that we can definitely do. Um, the ability to control all material elements or nature or natural forces uh, even I can do that so uh, we that's certainly something that we can do so I remember I, I think I've talked uh, I've, I've mentioned this to you before that um that this long time ago maybe almost 20 years ago uh, the first thing I learned when I was in that studying the third year of Una was the, um, is we come together as a group and we um, control, we come together to control the weather. So that is, so then we, we as a group, we cast a spell to try to control like what kind of weather, what's the um, temperature of the, the, the next day it's going to be. So we and so, yeah, that is something that totally doable. And um, so controlling the, the weather, um, the other ability is to know the past, present, and future. Yeah, we can tap into that. And some of you, maybe not all of you, probably can do that already to be able to tap into the past and the future and also to find out what's going on like right here right now so that's certainly something that Sifu James has, has taught us um, to do to tolerate heat cold and other dualities um, yeah I I tend to believe that most uh, younger people can do that much better than the, the, the older people. Um, because if you look at some of the, the, the young people, no matter how cold it is, they just wear something so thin and flimsy and they're okay. As long as they, they have something that is long sleeve, they're good to go. And sometimes I even see people with short sleeves uh, and like short pants, even on a cold day. So while I was having at least two, three layers on, and they, so that is something that we can totally do already now. So, and some of the other cities is to know the minds of others. Yeah, we can do that. Um, Sivu James has taught us how to do that. You, you actually, um, one, he, one, I think one retreat, what he actually taught us how to um, communicate with trees. So not just with one another, we can do that with anything. So as long as we um, 
zoom in to the, the vibration of the object that we want to communicate with, we can totally communicate with them and find out what it is that's going on with them. So we already know how to do that. Whether we actually take the time to develop that ability so that it can come to us like as easy as just flipping our fingers, you know, that's, that's a different matter. But whether we can do it or not, I have no doubt that we have that. So to know the minds of others, we covered that. To influence fire, sun, water, or even poison to, to actually to, um, to make sure that let's say our body, if we ingest some poison, that our body won't be harmed by the poison. We, can, we totally can do that. I know people who can do that. Um, for example, Wim Hof. Wim Hof, if you, if you search on the, on, um, the internet, he actually has been studied that people inject some toxins into him and they actually monitor his body starting to transmute those toxins so that they will not harm his body. He can do that. And he's actually taught that to, he, he teach that to other people as well. And I actually know of one of my um, Qigong master um, can do that. So we totally can do that. Um, the ability to remain unconquered by others. Um, so anybody in this, uh, on this call or anybody you know of who has not taken um, the jab, you are already unconquerable because I don't, if you really note, know how many millions, if not billions have been spent on trying to convince you to take that um, medical procedure, you know that. The odds of you opting out of that is actually stacked against you. So if you are right now um, have not taken that medical procedure, then you know <laughs> you are, that it is possible to be unconquered because your mind uh, cannot be conquered. That's just that's just the way it is. So I have no doubt that this is not just something that is rumored is actually something that is very real. The ability to be undisturbed by hunger, thirst, or other bodily uh, appetite. Um, yep, we can do that. There are people who, um, after years of practice though, um, is able to do that. I know there are definitely Tibetan monks and um, can do that. And there are definitely um, breatharians who just need to gaze at the sun and they don't need to eat or drink water. So that is totally doable. So ability to see things far away. So that is really clairvoyant. Yeah, we have that check we can hear things far away. So that is clear audience. Yep, I can, even I can do that. So no problem at all. Um, so let's see, what, what else is there? Enter the bodies of others. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I remember the, maybe not the first workshop, but probably maybe second or third workshop that I attended a long time ago, long time as in maybe five, six years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, Sifu James actually taught us how to do that. We, um, how to do that is to go into, send your energy into someone else's body so that you can check what's going on in their body. So yes, we can totally do that. <clears throat> What else? Um, okay, yeah, I, I think that's enough. That's that's enough. So that is the cities. So that is really when we really take the time to do it. 
we can all develop these cities, not just one or two of them, but actually all of them. We have that capability. So these are cities. This is, this is what um, power over self can do. This is self-mastery. And self-mastery is a, it's not something that you, you can do overnight. It takes time. It may take lifetimes to do that. However, this is just to let you know how powerful we all actually are. So uh, questions, comments so far? I have a question when when uh, you said the Shifu James have taught you guys before I uh, join uh, you can go person's body like send the energy to somebody else's body and check so when you check that the like do you only look at the sickness in the body or any even the blockages of like energy blockages you can actually see what's going on inside the people's body okay so then we uh, can we develop the ability to help them to heal yes okay. <laughs> yes yes because yes. i'm just thinking like the energy work we we do like with the my class my other teacher so it I know that it is working, but I wanted to make sure that. Yep, we we can. Thank you. And um, yeah, it, we can. We can totally do that. Um, there are so we can see what's going on inside other people's body. So that is one city. And the other city is we can actually issue command to mm -hmm. other people. And um, so we can act, I can actually issue a command to, to have someone else heal. That is totally doable. So mm -hmm. does it actually work? It depends on um, how confident you are about being able to do that. So you yourself have to resolve any um, doubts on yourself. Okay. When you resolve the doubts, then you really have to check in with the other person as well, because you are actually, um, you are commanding them. So you are, are you forcing something on them? Or are you actually assisting them to do what they actually want to do naturally? So then mm -hmm. there is that difference. So you have to um, really know. You know so yes, um, in the in the olden days, there are healers who say heal, <laughs> and and it's done, and they can be because they have actually developed their own city. Remember one of the city is you can command and other people will listen to you. Mm -hmm. That is actually a city. Okay. Now, do you want to exercise the city or not? That is a different question. No, I would love to learn that. That is nice. I like to exercise that. That's what I call like a fun play shop. So if you don't uh, experience that, then it doesn't make that sense to just listen to the words. It's nice to go through mm -hmm. that. I, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a practical person, so I like to do that. Let's see what other people have to say. Okay. Um, Charlotte, you had you wanted yeah. to something? Well, I had a comment to make it when you were talking. I'm just thinking back to the beginning here a bit. You were talking about the formlessness of consciousness. And I, I've been sort of uh, following um, Oracle Girl as well. And one thing she had said in one of her um, presentations or videos was that the earth didn't have water. Water was brought here, just, just as an aside. But 
is, is it because we don't realize the power that we have and that we're so railroaded by the pharmacy pharmaceutical industry that we we're not more often healing ourselves or attempting to heal ourselves or even considering it or we just don't know how to do it or we just don't believe we can do it or all of the above <laughs> It's uh, yes, we definitely have been um, brainwashed into giving our power away to um, experts, doctors. <laughs> so <laughs> we have, we can actually heal ourselves. Yeah, we can, that sounds pretty cool. Like, all, all healing is actually self healing. It's, hmm. you know, like we heal ourselves all the time. We just don't think of it as healing ourselves. Like there actually no one can heal you except yourself. All mm -hmm. the pharmaceutical um, drugs, what they can do is actually to um, stop the symptoms so that you don't, you don't feel the discomfort so that you actually can, because um, when you, when your sinus are all stuck up and you're sneezing your head off, you don't really, you're not in the, the right space of mind to you know, okay, I'm gonna meditate uh, to heal my body. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, when yeah, you feel yeah. so much discomfort, can you do that? No, no <laughs> well, okay, maybe some people can, but most people will, will not be in, the, in that frame of mind. The thing is to, to think that yes, you stop the, the symptoms to give yourself time in order to come into center to heal yourself, but then to rely on the drugs all the time to, to do things for us that we can naturally do for ourselves. That is really, um, that's, that's too far gone the other way. Right. But to say that, okay, I'm just going to tough it up, even though like I'm sneezing, but I'm going to just meditate and heal myself. <laughs> I don't know, but I bought a neti pot. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I it, but I bought one. <laughs> I, um, for a lot of the, um, like, I'm not saying that, you know, allopathic medicine is bad. It's just the way we use it is, is over the board. Yeah. Um, Allopathic medicine, when it's used properly, it's it's great. It's like when you um like when you're in an accident, don't try to heal yourself. Um, you're like stop, go to the a doctor and have yourself patched up first, so that you don't have bones or or you know um, blood vessels splaying blood out. That's not that's not the time to practice healing yourself seriously so you need to actually get yourself into a, a, a time and space where you are comfortable enough to be able to do the rest of the healing on yourself but to completely rely on a pill or you know some medical procedure to heal you and give all of your power away that's going too far so some it's it's not about power over self, not about self-mastery. Um, self-mastery is, is not the, the right way or power over others is not the wrong way. It, it is being able to go um, consciously choose which way you should take, what, what is the best way and to find a way that is maybe in between the two so but yes any other comments or questions if not then i will continue to talk about power over self so what is power over self um Oh, sorry, not power over self, but power over others. Yes, so power over self is self-mastery. So you develop all these um, abilities within yourself to, so that 
like you you like when you have fully developed all of these you are pretty much god like and power over others what i consider as power over others is really using technology or techniques or to accomplish or assist yourself to go on a fast kind of like a fast track yourself so that you can do the things that you otherwise would still be able to do if you've taken the long way so that is really power what power over others may be so power over others does not mean um, others as in another person it could be um, relying on technology could be relying on something that other than your own consciousness. So that is what my definition of power over others are. So let's kind of um, go back to that list of cities. So again, and um, and kind of talk, talk about, so like these are the things that we can do for ourselves. So what does power over others look like? When we, um, when we switch over to talk about power over others. So being able to alter the size of our body, we can do that. Um, if the way to do this is actually to develop a, the technology, to find a technology that would be able to reduce the, the size of your body. So is somebody actually trying to do that? Um, I, I'm pretty sure someone is already trying to do that. Whether it's already done or it's in the process, I don't know. But I do know that this is something that someone is probably trying <laughs> to develop this technology somewhere to be able to reduce one's body size to, you know, maybe not a size of one atom but at least to a smaller size, not even just our body, but material, but let's say a chair to reduce the chair into something that is much smaller. So that's definitely this technology I'm quite sure exists, if not, um, or like it, it probably is going to exist sometime in the near future or already existed. And the reverse is probably quite true already, is to be able to expand our body or a, an object to infinitely larger size. Yeah, definitely. I'm quite sure that technology can do that. To become weightless or light, we can totally have... Um, actually, I think that this technology is, is already existed. Um, in different forms and um, on earth it has like I know previous civilizations has this technology it's really about um, reversing the um, gra so playing with gravity because gravity um, uh, has to do with the weight of our body or weight of any object so when you manipulate when you're able to manipulate the the, the gravity then you are able to um, manipulate the, the weight of an object. So this technology already existed. Um, to become heavy or dense, that's just the reverse of this. So if you have one te technology to become lighter, you definitely can reverse it to make uh, an object heavier. To access any place in the world, uh, teleportation most likely already existed. Um, we don't, as, as human beings, we don't, uh, or as normal everyday human beings, we don't have access to those technologies yet, but those technology already existed. Um, okay, realize one's desire. Can you have a technology to do that uh, I know there are techniques to do that definitely we don't really need to uh, use technology 
So the, for example, um, <laughs> using, using controlling, um, so controlling social media would actually be able to, you can make things happen to realize um, what you want in order to do that. So yeah, already have that. Um, force your influence upon anyone. Uh, yes, this technology existed. Does it exist in human beings? I do know that the, um, Let's see, the, <clears throat> it is an implant that we, at one point, human beings have, have this implant of um, that we take orders. We can take orders. The, the Anunnakis are able to, they are geneticists, so they can actually manipulate the, the genes and put in certain genes that will make human, that actually make human beings, well, okay, not human beings, but beings that will take order. So that is an implant that uh, a lot of human beings still have. You, however, uh, right now, there's still a um, fair bit of human beings that still have that implant. That implant, um, once your own consciousness goes higher than a certain level, the implants will start to glitch out. So that's that's definitely that technology already existed. Whether human beings actually, um, regular human beings can do that, um, not sure. But definitely some human beings, the 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 people that are in the know, have that technology. And they are definitely using it on us. Um, <clears throat> control material elements and natural forces. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about um, something called HAP. So not so H A A L P. I think that's how they spell it. I, I forgot about it, but it's really a um, technology to manipulate weather. So that is definitely uh, already existed, something that already existed. That's why sometimes you have um, crazy weather patterns all of a sudden over certain areas, that's, that's hop. So that technology already existed. Um, human beings actually naturally have the ability to do that. However, technology also um, can do that as well. Uh, to know the minds of others, yes, that technology is already there. Um, <laughs> that's why we have all of these surveillance um, to actually listen to our minds. They have all these, and Siri, all of that um, technology to listen to what's going on, so. Yes, the technology already existed to be able to um, influence natural elements like sun, water, all of that. Um, yeah, that technology definitely have existed um, to to even able to um, to transmute poison. Yes, actually. I don't know if you guys have heard of Rife. So Rife is a, then I forgot the name of the person, but um, somebody invented the Rife machine, which is a frequency generator. So it's really about matching the frequency. If when you match the frequency of something, you break it. So that's how you transmute the poison. Is you find the frequency of the poison and you just send the, the the signature back to the poison and it's, it explodes. The, the poison is just cannot be anymore. So yeah, that technology existed. Um, ability to conquer others or, or, or re to remain unconquered by others. We have that too. I don't know whether you guys know. Uh, uh, I know in movies there are, it's like Robocop. So you, you guys have, have seen that movie 
it came out <clears throat> a long time ago. Well, a long time as in maybe 20 years ago, 10, 20 years ago, around that time frame, that technology existed already. Um, we, we have all these armor to protect us so that we, we like, when we go into battle, then we don't get hurt. We may be able to hurt other people, but we don't get hurt. So that technology um, definitely existed. Uh, what else? Um, to be undisturbed by hunger and other bodily appetites. Um, the technology. I have to think about this one. I know bodily appetites. Um, yeah, I think we, we can definitely, I think I'm quite sure there are definitely pills to make our body do something or don't do something. So some of that, maybe maybe not. Oh, actually there are some diet pills that, that you don't feel hunger when you, when you um, take those. So maybe not to the extent that we don't have to eat anymore, but definitely um, we don't have to eat as much or drink as much. So those technology already existed. To be able to hear things or see things far away. Yep, technology, we have that. <laughs> so teleportation. Um, yes, we have that teleportation as well. Maybe not astro project, but we have that as well. Um, what else? What are some of the other ones? So I think that that really gives you some idea of that there are definitely technologies that can assist us to act as though we have developed all these cities or at least some of these cities that there are some technology that instead of going through the, um, taking the long time to develop these cities on our own, there are technologies that we can just go and, and um, use those technologies and techniques and we'll be able to do all of those things. Is one way better than the other? Um, that's not for me to say, that's for each and every one of you to decide for yourself. I just know that the reason why we are here, why we um, are here in this moment when the transition of energy is that there is kind of like a fork in the road. Um, the from third dimension going up to fifth dimension, the fourth and fifth dimension is when we get to decide which, which road, which path do we really want to explore? Do we want to explore as a consciousness? Do we want to build more on self-mastery or do we want to build more on using technology, techniques and and so those things in order to um, accomplish that, that's our choice. The creator source does not um, tell us what is right and what is wrong. The creator source created each one of us so that we can all go and experience and experiment and um, not just in this lifetime, but the uh, our soul itself actually is like like when I'm talking to you right now. There is for, so my soul is actually there are other versions of my soul. Maybe not other versions of Winnie, because Winnie is kind of a unique um, point of view, a unique um, observer of what's going on in reality. So there are other versions of the soul, of my soul, 
playing different roles um, in different dimensions that are actually going through this, this journey of going from formless to form and then back into formless. And some of us may be taking the, the power over self. And then some of us may be taking the power over others' role. The, the point is that each soul actually is, has many different versions and different points of view so that we can, um, at one point, be able to access the Akashic record. Because each everything that I, I do, every thought that I have, is all recorded, in energetically recorded for um, the higher parts, the higher versions of me, and also other versions of my soul to be able to access at some point in time. So at some point in time, all of my experiences um, would be taken into consideration by my um, oversoul so that my oversoul would be able to get all of my experiences, get all of my, the, my access to my um, mother's side, my mother's lineage, and also my father's lineage. All of those people that has come together through millions and billions of um, different lifetimes in order to come to this, this point in time. So a higher version of me is taking in all of these and being able to not just have access to my Akashic record, but also to have access at some point, everyone else's Akashic record. So the Akashic record is... Um, there is actually a, uh, a technology that is equi equivalent to that, and that is AI. So AI is learning, is, is learning because we created the internet and we've been feeding it information. We've, we've created so many things. And it, even on YouTube, like you can, you can search a lot of things. You can get a lot of information just from that. That is an artificial form of our Akashi record. We actually have energetically, we, there is an organic version of AI that is not just built, um, like AI is actually relatively new in the, the, the um, in history or his, history of the universe, AI is relatively new. Whereas the Akashic record, our natural organic Akashic record have so much more. And we actually have access to that. Um, not me, not right now. I have, I can read Akashic record, but I don't read all of the Akashic record of everyone else. Um, so I don't have conscious uh, access to that amount of information yet. But I do, like when I want to learn about something, yes, I can go into the Akasha record and be able to pull out some information for myself or like I've actually done that for other people as well. So that's absolutely, we can do that. And we have that ability if we want to um, develop the, that, that uh, capability to be able to have access to all of the Akashic record. And at some point in time in the future, our future self would be able to do that. Take all of our collective experience and be able to know all of that. So that is probably when we, on our journey back into formless, that's probably something that we can do. Um, right now, I don't have that ability yet, but that is what we are all here to do, is to actually live life so that we can 
have experiences and all of these experiences would be filed into the Akashic record so that at some point in the future, um, all of these collective wisdom would be sieved through by the highest, the much higher version of ourselves, And we'll be able to get to a point where we can actually become godlike and be able to think something and make it come true. Be able to tell the mountains, move over two inches, please. And the mountain would shift because it is totally doable. Not right now, but some point in the future, we can do that. And why are we all here? We are all here to play and be a part of this long game. There is no right, no wrong. Um, and whether we want to experiment with power over self or power over others, no right, no wrong. It's up to you. So <laughs> that is um, what I want to talk about tonight. Questions, comments. Uh, what is the purpose of looking into the Akashic Records? What do we learn from that? Just the past. Hmm? Or how it affects us today? I'm just trying to find an example of how to do that, of, of why. Um, so, so Earth has an Akashic record. Venus has an Akashic record. And Jupiter has an Akashic record. Different planets have their own um, humanoid people on there playing and creating experiences. And um, so, because all of the planets are linked, so if, let's say, Earth has a problem, and the Earth civilization is fairly new, but Earth can actually send out a message to uh, the other planets and say, hey, Earth has this problem. Has any one of the other planets come across something similar? And if they have, then what have they done and what are the results? So that's one of the reasons why the Akashic, you would want to consult the Akashic records. Yeah. So when you say you have done it for other people, it was what for reason? What reason? Like personally? Um. So sometimes when a person may have a, a certain pattern that they're running in their lives, mm -hmm. and, and so they're like, you know what? I don't, I don't understand how come I, I have this issue. Then mm -hmm. I sometimes would look at the Akashic record and be able to say, oh, okay. Um, it's because of something that happened, let's say, uh, a few lifetimes ago. Um, for example, um, the more recent one is, uh, I think I, I, got, I have talked to you guys about it, um, maybe not in, on the podcast, but is I have this friend that, that um, I dislike this person a lot. And that person has not done anything to me that actually um, that deserved this 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 um, the, my animosity towards this person. So like I this and I've been you know this this person uh, recently contacted me again, and I when I when we communicate is like this anger and and you know just. All of this, all of this uh, comes up again. So I, mm -hmm. so I was like, 
hmm, what's going on? Because I know that this person has not done anything wrong to me. I mean, yeah, he's he's a nice guy, actually. So I so I, I decided to, you know, just one day tap into our Akashic record. So when when did I last when when was this created this anim animosity that I'm feeling now? Actually I I, I um, connected to a previous lifetime when he actually uh, cheated me out of an inheritance. So that's that's when the animosity was created. I am just now becoming more present to that animosity. So, so that's that's I I'm just tapping into something that I just I'm just scratching my head. How come this is happening? But it's something that is created, not this lifetime, but some other lifetimes. So knowing that you would be able to clear it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What would you say? Just meditate and let it go. It's, <laughs> it's really a choice. It's really a choice. Once you know what happened, it's really a choice. Do you want to keep the grudge or not? If not, then like process the 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 grudge it's um yeah it's it is like if you don't know then you don't know where that energy is coming from but once mm -hmm. you've traced the origin of that then it's simply a choice do you want to keep it or not So it can work both ways. So you can, if a person says, okay, I like to be a painter. So you can pick up when in the previous life you were a painter. So you can bring that energy at this present life and then you can be a better at it. Okay, good. Thanks. Yes, <laughs> you can. You can do that. Yes. Yep. You can connect to skills from previous lifetime or from anyone else on your lineage. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. So you can go in your family background too. Yep. So is <laughs> that the, the... Go ahead. Mm, me? Thank you. Vini, can you explain, you said that you know technology that we can that can us um, eat less? <laughs> <laughs> no, mine is, I love food. I can eat, but become a slimmer. <laughs> I need that technology to shrink. <laughs> there are, there are, I know there are diet pills that, you know, makes you um, feel more full. Now, um, the... <laughs> Whether those diet pills are good for you or not, I cannot attest to it. Oh, you mean you think uh, I got it? You mean technology? It means that pills and all kind of stuff. Yeah, I thought that it's gonna be like energy technology, so we can do something and meditate and make ourselves do not eat as much, and at the same time feel like satisfied. Um, <laughs> power over self can do that as well. What? So you have power over self, self mastery. You actually have to. So, um, in short, you have to find out what eating is doing for you. Pleasure. Pleasure. So why do you? Why do you feel that you? There's so little. So you have associated food with pleasure. So all you have to do is associate something that you actually want to do with pleasure. So for example, playing piano or knitting is pleasure. Then you can do that instead of eating. Oh, switch attention. Yeah. Like pleasure not here, yeah. but there. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Thank you. 
Mm. I heard some talk yesterday where the guy was saying about smoking. Like, uh, you have to go behind the emotion also, yeah, as to why you want to smoke. So when you first start, like, you just want to fit in with people who are smoking. And that's mm -hmm. how you start, like, yeah, basically. Yeah. And then uh, he said that once he decided he doesn't want to be a smoker, so every time he got the urge, he said, why am I doing that? I'm not, I'm not a smoker, you know? I, I don't want to smoke. So I don't need that. Yeah. So that's how he slowly trained himself to get away. It was so funny when I was a student and um, we went, in the times they sent us to collect the cotton on a field. And my friend wanted to teach me how to smoke. So she told me, say, shock. So I said, and I was start coughing so bad. Since then, I never ever try smoking. <laughs> so she teach me how to not smoke. It was alive. Tatiana, you were going to tell me how not to snore. You said you would tell me one time. Yeah, I, it's it's easy. It just your those circles with your tongue, tongue. on top of the palate. Circle one side and another side. I'm gonna show you. Oh, that's good. That's oh. good to know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you open your mouth and you do circles with your mouth on on the upper palate. Open. Ten to one side, ten to the other. Only on the roof of the mouth. On a roof, yeah. And you can go like your tongue gonna go to the throat and back to the throat and back. It's oh, also it good for the double chin and you're not gonna snow if you're gonna train your, it's this muscle. Mm -hmm. Good, so you will not see my chin next time this one year. So I will yeah. keep doing that. <laughs> yeah. <Thank you. laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> See? There you go. There is the technology. Tricks. Yep, we can do to uh, to shape shift, shape shift our chin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, <laughs> we have that ability already. Nishi, have you done Tatiana's face yoga? She teaches very well. No, I just I'm a lazy person, so I like the things that get it done. I say. Nishi, you are young and it should turn out to be young. That's it. That's how I am. Okay. I'm looking for that technology. This is the best. To give, to give your command, command, you're supposed to be young. That's it. Yeah. I said, Nishi, you are beautiful. You are young and it should turn out like this. So that's what I'm looking for. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, next, uh, next time uh, we will find that if in my Akashic record, uh, uh, Vinny. So I'll just grab that and duck. <laughs> <laughs> See, I that's always, what lazy people do, okay? <laughs> I always asking Sifu, you know, about his um, um, idea about how to look younger. And it's interesting. I was asking him if he we can bring, you know, our ideal body, and if we can put my ideal body from my previous time. He said no, but later on he said that if we want to work with the muscles, we have to connect twenty nine inches, and in our face we have a lot of muscles, fifty eight muscles. So maybe we can, I, I didn't have a chance to ask him. So maybe we can bring that one. You can do it. <laughs> it. Just bring that one for yourself. You don't that to 50, 58 muscle to the face. Try it. <laughs> yeah. I was laughing yesterday. You asked the question again. <laughs> I always do. 
yeah. Because who, who else is gonna answer this question if not Sifu? Okay. Nobody. That, that said, we are going. Uh, everybody going in Shifu's class uh, next week or so. So everybody will come be transformed into a younger version. Okay. <laughs> no. Yes, I like that. That would be Something lovely. <laughs> we won't be in that same emotional state. I guess that is the reason why it wouldn't work. <laughs> no, I like to think positive. It can work anytime. <laughs> you cannot do life over. It's done, it's done. We're going forward. Nobody has a better technology. So he says that we will get younger as a group. Right? Um, <laughs> yep. In the higher dimension. In the higher dimension, yes. So we have to, something to look forward to rather than go backwards. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy. Because being able to, uh, like, we already have that ability. It's just that most of the time we are conditioned, we've been conditioned to grow old. And if we like, we are a certain age and we don't look that part, we're like, okay, what's happening here? And we actually want to fit in. So that's, so you have to start to catch yourself when you think uh, like that. It's, we actually, um, our body can can change, can shift. So if we can shift, that means we can shift to have no um, wrinkle lines. Because if you, like even for anyone that is not trying to do anything, if you take a photo of their face from day to day, if you just look at it, um, throughout even throughout the the one year you will know that your face does not most likely does not stay exactly the same throughout that year and depending on what energy comes in i, I actually have been noticing my face look different depending on what energy is coming in and where i am so i look different when i when i look at the the um mirror in the morning so that is naturally happening already our body can do that can shift the shape so if it can shift the shape being able to go to from um looking this way to looking from to, to something that's completely different it's not too much of a jump so it can be done it's just that we have been conditioned that you know we we have to look a certain way. No, we don't. Even children, children are changing. Like I watch my grandchildren; their pictures from like two months ago is not the same as what it is today. Mm -hmm. It's like different, it's different. It changes. Yeah, that is that is actually something that is natural, and it's been hijacked. So all we have to do is actually um, when we, one of the, the, the natural way to do it is really to let go of all of the, the internal conversations yeah. and just allow our body to um, do what is natural. Good. We're going to give you permission to get into our body and change that Thing saying, oh no, you're young and turn back to the uh, turn back the clock. That's it. Oh. <laughs> Listen, Carmelus gave us, Sifu <laughs> gave us um, that command for uh, to be younger, and Carnelius gave us command to be younger. He said, activate the skin system activate the dermatones, remove all emotions and beliefs regarding the belief in aging. I love and accept myself in every age. Mm -hmm. and, 
and see who gave us command, which I always repeat, five to eight DNA open, five to eight telomere generate, activate, five to eight telomere lengthen, activate, and five to eight M7G activate. M7G is for the skin. So I repeat it. No, you you can type you can type it and send it to us. That'll be nice. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> Just to think, I am a very lazy person. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> this is for this is for lazy person. <laughs> this is for lazy people. <laughs> Don't keep saying that. You'll get more lazy. I'm, but, I'm but like, in the other ways, so. <laughs> okay. When I, when I, I, I like, I like, I like what like Cornelius this. said today, when you give this okay. command, don't feel like you're just listening the consciousness. Feel that you are consciousness and give this command. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So write that down, send it to me, and I'll send okay. it to everybody. Okay, sure. Okay, you Thank guys you. ready for your meditation or you still have questions? Ready. We are, we are ready, ready to go. Ready, ready. Okay, great. Okay.